It's 6 p.m. on a Sunday here in Korea. Thank you for joining us. I'm Daniel Che. Let's start with our first story. Our top story this evening is Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's failure to include any sort of apology in his draft statement commemorating the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. The statement is slated to be issued on Friday. Our Kim Yeon bin has this report. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has shared a draft of this upcoming statement, marking the 70th anniversary of Japan's defeat in World War II. But there are no signs of an apology. According to Japanese daily Asahi Shimbun, the draft includes the word remorse for the war, but does not include the word apology. Abe reportedly showed the draft to the ruling Liberal Democratic Party and junior coalition partner Komito on Friday. He reportedly said that he would inherit as a whole the statements issued by former Prime Minister Tomichi Muriyama and Junichiro Kozumi to mark the 50th and 60th anniversaries of the end of the war. The Komito party reportedly requested a revision to the draft, emphasizing the need for an apology for Japan's colonial rule during the war. The newspaper added that Abe responded by acknowledging he had heard their opinions. The report mentioned that a final draft of the statement is expected after a meeting of Abe and his cabinet sometime this week. The Korean government has urged Tokyo on numerous occasions to carry on the statements drawn up by Moriyama and former Japanese chief cabinet secretary Yui Kono, both of which included a clear apology to the victims of Japan's sexual slavery program before and during World War II. Abe's statement is expected this week on August 14th, the day before the 70th anniversary of Japan's defeat in World War II. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Meanwhile, the mayor of the Japanese city of Nagasaki has urged the government to engage in careful and sincere deliberations on a series of security bills currently moving through parliament. In an address at the 70th anniversary of the U.S. bombing of the city, Mayor Tomihisa Taue said the peaceful path Japan has pursued in the past 70 years should never be changed. If the new bills are made into law, Japan will be allowed to engage in armed conflicts overseas for the first time in 70 years since the end of World War II. Japanese constitutional experts view the security legislation pushed by the Shinzo Abe administration as unconstitutional. Hiroshima and Nagasaki are the only cities in the world devastated by the atomic bomb. South Korea has denied a Japanese media report that the U.S. asked President Park Geun-hye not to attend a ceremony in China next month celebrating its victory over Japan in World War II. A foreign ministry official said Sunday the report is not true and emphasized that a situation like that would never happen. Earlier, Kyoto News had reported, citing anonymous U.S. government and diplomatic sources, that the U.S. urged President Park not to attend the September 3rd ceremony in Beijing. Kyoto added that Washington had contacted its embassy in Seoul and used other diplomatic channels to express concern about the Korean leader's possible attendance. The ministry official said President Park's attendance has not yet been determined. The worst of the MERS outbreak here in Korea may be over, but its impact is still being felt by small business owners. New data shows their numbers have nosedive as they are squeezed out of business by sluggish consumption and tight competition. Our Kim ji gives us the digits and more. The number of small businesses run by self-employed individuals in Korea has dropped to its lowest level in 20 years. Most of these are mom-and-pop stores in the food, retail and lodging sector. They're running out of business largely affected by the sluggish domestic consumption fueled by the MERS outbreak earlier this year. They're also being squeezed out by big retail stores and distribution chains and increased competition amongst themselves. In the January to June period, Statistics Korea says the number dropped by 107,000 from the same period last year to under 4 million. In response, the government says it's devising measures to increase support for self-employed business owners. For one thing, the Small and Mediums Business Administration is revitalizing its Hope Return Package, designed to help people who are closing their businesses find new jobs. Under the program, small business owners with annual sales of less than 129,000 U.S. dollars are eligible to receive employment counseling and financial aid. The state-run agency has also increased the amount of financial aid for those in the program from around $515 to a maximum of 644 The measure was devised to accommodate 10,000 applicants, but fewer than 520 people applied during the January to June period. Kim Jeong. Arirang News. 
Staying in South Korea, the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy has introduced a bill aimed at reforming the ownership structure of the country's family-run conglomerates, or Chebel, amid a public backlash over an escalating family feud for control of Lotte Group. The bill, a revision to the country's fair trade law introduced by Shinagyong and nicknamed the Lotte Law, bans intra company shareholding among a company's overseas units. The NPAD, the ruling Senduri Party, and the government have all expressed a desire for such reforms. The country's existing fair trade law bans new cross shareholding arrangements, but not existing ones. So, a revision that would compel the Chebel to reduce their existing cross shareholding arrangements was deemed necessary. The government says it's set to launch an underwater survey of the Sunken Sewaro Ferry, which claimed more than 300 lives when it sank more than a year ago, as it prepares to create a plan for salvaging that vessel. The Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries said Sunday the one week process will begin on August 23rd and will involve a remotely operated vehicle alongside professional divers. Last week, the government signed a 73 million U.S. dollar deal with a consortium led by China's state-run Shanghai Salvage to raise the ship. The aim to complete the salvaging process by next July. The Korean public's trust in the government has risen, but is still low when compared with other members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. According to the OECD's government at a glance report for this year, only 34 percent of Koreans surveyed said they trust the government, putting Korea at 26th among 41 nations in that category. This indicates Korea needs to do more to address breaches of integrity by public officials and help win back citizens' trust. The average level of trust in government among OECD member countries was 41.8 percent in 2014. That's down from 45.2 percent in 2007, according to Gallup World Poll data. On the bright side, however, Korea led the way in accessibility of government data for public use. It's summer vacation season here in Korea, which means it's time to get away from work and leave all your cares behind. But if you still haven't decided on a place to go, there's a forested park on Jeju-do Island where you could find the peace of mind you need. Our Won Ji-hyun tells us more. A forest full of deciduous trees. It's the Kochawai Forest, located on the mid slopes of Halasa Mountain on Jeju-do Island. This forest was naturally formed on volcanic rocks when the lava from Halasan cooled off hundreds of years ago. Now, about 10 percent of the unique forest has been transformed into a recreation park thanks to a project by the Jeju Free International City Development Center. It took the team six years to build winding trails and rest areas in the forest so that visitors can closely experience its natural wonders. Here in Jeju, most of the trees in the area are called thorn trees. Kochawar is also unique in that it's the only place in the world where tropical and polar plants coexist. Its well-preserved ecosystem is also a sanctuary for wild animals. I just saw a roe deer at a very close range. I was also able to hear many bird calls that I've never heard before. I definitely felt rejuvenated here. The park has five different walking trails, which add up to about 6.5 kilometers altogether. There's also an eco-learning center near the park to remind visitors about the true value of Kochawa. In addition to providing natural oxygen for Jeju residents, we hope that the Kochawa Park will become a place of healing for visitors. Won ji Arirang News. Shifting gears to a different story now, Typhoon Saudelor has wreaked havoc on Taiwan. According to the country's interior ministry, at least six people have been killed since the storm approached on Thursday. Four people are missing and 379 people have been injured. Taiwan's Central Weather Bureau said the storm made landfall early Saturday, arriving with wind speeds of more than 160 kilometers per hour near its center and dropping more than 760 millimeters of rain on Taiping Mountain in the northeast. Strong winds brought down electrical lines, causing power outages to more than 3 million households by Saturday afternoon while flipping several freight cars at a train station in the northeast. The storm, considered the strongest of the year, has lost strength since it made landfall and continues to do so as it heads toward China. 
Now for a quick look at the weather conditions. Here in Korea, you'll want to dress light as we're expecting another scorcher of a week. Seoul will get up to 33 degrees Celsius on Monday. Daegu will reach 34. And Gwangju rises all the way to 33. By the middle of the week, you won't want to leave home without your umbrella as we have some rain in the forecast nationwide. That's all for Korea. Let's check out the weather conditions outside of Korea, around the world, and in your neck of the woods. And that's all we managed to squeeze into this newscast. Thank you so much for watching. Do join us again at 10 p.m. Korea time for more. Good day or good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from.